No, of course I'm not trading my bike in. It was clickbait. But in this video, I will talk about why I'm keeping my 2019 Speed Twin and why you still may want to consider the new 2021 model. Now, if you found this video, I'm sure you're aware that Triumph have just announced a new updated version of the Speed Twin for 2021. Everybody knows that the majority of their motivation for updating this bike was to bring it into Euro 5 emissions compliance so that they could continue selling it in the EU. But in addition to that, we got some new paint jobs, some visual tweaks, and a few improvements to performance and handling. The updates are, starting at the front, a new Metzler Racetech Double R tire replacing the Pirelli Diablo Rosso 3. A uh, new wheel design, Brembo M50 brakes on the front, uh, Marzaki upside down front forks replacing the very basic right side up forks that it originally had, a new paint scheme for the gas tank with a couple new color options. Uh, they blacked out this bit on the sort of faux carb cover there. New mufflers no longer using this design with the black body and silver tip. It's now an all silver body with a black tip and a slightly revised engine, which they claim is more responsive and now has 99 horsepower instead of 96, which it had before, and also peak torque coming now at 500 RPM lower than it did before. Now, I welcome any and all progress and improvements that a motorcycle manufacturer can apply to one of their models, but not all of the things we got from Triumph for the new Speed Twin are things that people were asking for, and not all of the things people were asking for appeared on this new revised model. While the improvements they did make are very welcome, and I'm sure a lot of people will be happy with them, they're not quite enough for me to want to upgrade to the new model. Let's go for a ride and I'll explain why. So I'll start with what I think is the most noteworthy update that Triumph made to the new Speed Twin, and that's the suspension. It's been everyone's biggest complaint with the motorcycle ever since it was released in 2019. Just super basic, non-progressive springs, right side up fork, and just the world's most basic no-name shocks on the back. That's part of the reason why everyone was clamoring for a Speed Twin R, which would in theory have Olins on the back and those Showa upside down fully adjustable forks on the front. What we got instead are some Marzaki upside down forks that are non-adjustable. Now I'm sure those will perform a little bit better than the stock ones and combined with the potentially lighter rims, they represent a reduction in unsprung weight. Reducing unsprung weight is of course always a welcome improvement as it will make the bike lighter on its feet. But that's not something where I ever thought the Speed Twin needed to be improved. In fact, it was one of the things that impressed me most about it when I first got mine. So yes, all improvements are welcome, all progress is good, but is that really what you wanted to put your R&D money into, Triumph, was reducing unsprung weight? Just some simple progressive springs and preload adjustment in the forks probably would have given people the improvement in suspension that they were looking for. Plus, I always said with the stock suspension that people who are lighter, like myself, and don't ride as aggressively, uh, enjoy riding on those forks more than people who are heavier and do ride more sportily all the time. And yeah, we got new forks that should perform better, but they're still non-adjustable. And that means that lighter and or less aggressive riders are still gonna have a different opinion about them than heavier or more aggressive riders. If they were adjustable, you could have made both crowds happy. Me personally, I was fine with it, but just for kicks, I still swapped it out for the very affordable Tech Bike Parts adjustable suspension setup, and now I love it even more. Next, the tires. Triumph. What are you thinking with the tires? Racetech double R's? I always said that the Pirelli Diablo Rosso 3's that came on my 2019 model were an optimistic choice for this bike. They should have gone with something more like a Michelin Road 5, which I eventually swapped onto here and which Triumph themselves put on the new Trident 660. But no, 
with the new Speed Twin, they doubled down and put on Metzler Racetech double R's. That is above a Super Sport tire. That's a racing tire. That's like, you did the Isle of Man on that tire. So now that's even more grip potential not being used by the typical Speed Twin owner and even less longevity out of that tire. When was the last time you saw a Speed Twin do a track day? I mean, I'm not saying it wouldn't be worthy of it, but do people do it? Next, they made improvements to the engine to boost responsiveness and power. I'm gonna say it again, progress is always good, and I'm impressed that they found a way to improve something that was already awesome. But that's my whole point. It was already awesome. The power did not need improved. When you're in third gear at 4,000 RPM and you roll on the throttle, this thing takes off like a ballistic missile. It's got just so much torque and it is already pretty low in the rev range. It's one of the things that makes this bike so effortless to ride. And yet they devoted some of their finite R&D money to having more torque lower in the rev range. It just wasn't necessary. I mean, watch this. Whew. I do not need this bike to be more powerful than that. No, it doesn't have the top end rush of a super sport. I mean, you saw Chase on two wheels recently reviewing his speed twin that he borrowed from Triumph saying that it felt slow once you got up to highway speeds, but that's because he's used to riding super bikes where you can roll on the throttle when you're already doing 110 and the thing takes off. You're just not gonna get a top end rush like that from a parallel twin tuned the way this one is. But between zero and 80 miles an hour, this thing is an absolute bruiser. So when I saw that Triumph was boasting about improved power performance, and when I saw the way they had approached improving the suspension, I just thought, what? Let's talk about the looks, which is of course completely subjective, but I'm not a big fan of the changes they made. I prefer my wheels that are on my bike, I don't like the new headlight brackets. I think they're weirdly droopy. I don't like that with the upside down forks, we lost the fork gaiters that helped give it that classic look. The new paint scheme is okay. I will actually say I really appreciate the way they did those two stripes that kind of terminate right where your knee goes. Um, that means that you could add knee pads, tank pads, tank grips, whatever you want to call them without sort of ruining the paint scheme. Uh, with my bike, I had always wanted to add pads like that because I like having those, but they just kind of don't line up with the way my gas tank is painted. That is, of course, not a problem if you go for one of the solid black ones. They changed the mufflers. Uh, I know the original ones were pretty polarizing. I happen to like them, but I know that probably about half of people did not like them, so I don't blame Triumph for wanting to change those, and I don't mind the way the new ones look. I should also talk about what I think is possibly the most disappointing omission, and that is that they made no real improvement to the rear shock. I think that if Triumph had skipped all of the other changes they made to this bike, except maybe the paint schemes in Euro 5, if they had skipped all of that and just replaced the rear shocks with a pair of Olins like you see on the Thruxton R, people would have gone gaga for it. Instead, we got this weird mishmash of updates where it's like some of it's good, some of it's good but unnecessary, and some of it is things that should have been addressed but were totally ignored. <sighs> now, and I wish I'd been more clear about this earlier, now the last thing I want to do in this video is dissuade anyone from buying a Triumph Speed Twin, new or old. It is still an absolutely awesome bike one of the best, most well-sorted all-round street motorcycles you can buy today. You can tour on it, you can shred up back roads on it, you can go downtown with it, and you can do it all in style. It looks amazing, the noise is amazing, and every time you crack that throttle open and feel that torque, you just, oh my god. I mean, if you're into motorcycles at all, you owe it to yourself to at least ride a Speed Twin, and the new one is better than ever. 
it is improved. Nothing Triumph did made this motorcycle worse. Okay, yeah, those Racetech double R's are gonna wear out really fast and you're probably never gonna extract all their performance potential, but then you just throw a pair of Road 5's on. So yeah, if you're in the market for a modern classic Roadster of any kind, I would still steer you towards the Speed Twin. And I would say that the newly updated model is the one to get. That is, unless you like really hate the things they did to it visually, but hey, these things are meant to be customized. You can always rectify that on your own. So now I wanna hear from you guys about this in the comments below. Let me know, did you get what you wanted from this newly updated Speed Twin? Did it make you more or less likely to purchase a new one? And if you already own a Speed Twin, are you considering trading up? I'll be sticking with my 2019 for years to come. So if you wanna see what I get up to with it, then make sure you're subscribed to this channel. As always, you ride safe, and I'll see you back here for the next video. Thanks for watching. Thank you.